I'm Laura Clark, and this is the Penguin Business Beat. Up next, we have an interview with CNBC's Maria Bartiromo. Maria's new book, The Weekend That Changed Wall Street, chronicles the weekend starting on September 12, 2008. The weekend that Lehman Brothers fell, Bank of America bought Merrill Lynch, and the Fed was deciding whether to bail out AIG. Maria took a few minutes out of her very busy day to give us her personal take on the financial crisis and what we still need to learn from it. So your new book is called The Weekend That Changed Wall Street. Uh, the weekend in question starts on September 12, 2008. What made you decide to write this book? This was such an unbelievable, momentous time for our nation. And as a result, I felt that I had a front seat and I needed to document what was going on. It was such an unbelievable moment in time for our financial system and for confidence of the banking system on the, system on the part of Americans. I've been at CNBC for 17 years and, and have had the great fortune to be able to interview the leaders and insiders of the financial industry. And I think that weekend was very important because the industry and the financial system really did teeter on collapse. So I felt it was a perfect opportunity to take these interviews, talk to people who were really making these decisions to try and figure out what will change and how this happened in the first place. So from your vantage point, did you think that Lehman was going to survive the weekend? Well, it was really a close call. I mean, you know, I was frantically taking calls from so many people and making calls and emailing and texting uh, during some of the important meetings uh, at the Fed and between uh, executives at Lehman Brothers. And I think, for the most part, people were not sure that Lehman would make it. And it wasn't necessarily an issue of, is Lehman Brothers too big to fail? But more so, look, Lehman made decisions to take on debt in terms of real estate and made decisions to, you know, go a certain direction. And at the end of the day, because they did that, you know, they should be held accountable. When Tim Geithner called that important meeting at the Fed on Friday night and basically put it to the other captains of industry saying, look, you know, you have an opportunity to save Lehman if you swallow up their toxic debt, that, that is the debt that was plummeting in value, was not worth what anybody expected it to be worth. You know, it became clear that these guys already had that kind of toxic debt on their own balance sheet. So why would they take on more? That's when I realized, okay, this is a real possibility that Lehman would go down, and I started to think about what the implications would be. You had people calling throughout the weekend from within the Fed and from Lehman, and it seems like at several points people got choked up while, while they were talking to you. Was this really unusual to you at the time? Absolutely. I mean, you have to realize we're talking about tens of thousands of employees who were so proud to be working at Lehman Brothers and so proud to be doing what they were doing. I mean, they took tremendous pride in their work. And here they are after working so hard and believing in their company, facing the opportunity that, in fact, the firm could go down and they, they would be out of a job, everybody would be out of a job. So this was not just about work. This was about life. This was about their livelihoods. And so you could understand why there were, you know, people choked up and crying because they didn't know what was next. And then they're thinking about their families and their extended families and how would they continue living. What was the most upsetting thing you heard over the course of that weekend? I think it was just upsetting to see an iconic firm fall the way that it did. I mean, luckily, Barclays came in and did acquire a lot of employees, acquired the building, you know. Um, so not everybody was, was out. But, you know, it was a very, very tenuous time in our history. And it was a moment in time when, when people came to realize Lehman Brothers may fail, and that's going to impact everybody because everyone is connected. And, you know, if you see one firm go down, what's to say another firm is not going to go down tomorrow? And so it was, you know, that weekend, I think what was important about that meeting at the Fed was for the first time, all the people around the table figured out that they were all impacted by what went on. And, you know, it wasn't just, okay, one of my competitors is down. It's, okay, my competitor is down and I may be next. And I think, you know, it was upsetting all around. It wasn't just one conversation that I had or one situation that I had where I felt like, okay, this is over the top. It was all over the top. It was a critical moment in, in history. And I remember everyone I spoke with said to me, Maria, this time is different. This is not your average sell-off. This is not your average downturn. 
You've been reporting from the floor of the Stock Exchange for 16 years now. I'm wondering, looking back at the scene before and after this critical moment, uh, how would you describe the change on Wall Street? Well, things have changed tremendously. You know, I think that the weekend of the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy was important because not only of the impact that it had over the short term, but the impact that it had over the long term. For starters, the floor of the New York Stock Exchange is night and day from when I started. You know, I started at the New York Stock Exchange in 1994. And at that time, it was a very busy place. Volume was high. Um, people were running around trying to get their trades done. There was a lot of action in the auction-type environment. Now, most of, most of the business is electronic, so you don't have that many people running around. I mean, at the peak, I think there were more than 3,000 people on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. You've got about 1,000 right now. So the number of people have changed dramatically and come down because much of the business is electronic. You know, the financial crisis, another major change from that weekend is it empowered a new administration. You know, there's a new sheriff in town. It empowered a new administration to take a bigger bite out of business, take have a, a bigger control of business, come up with more regulation, stricter regulation, um, change the banking sector to the tune of, you know, you're seeing some firms sell assets. You're seeing certain firms, you know, merge and consolidate because... They have to because they are being attacked because they're not allowed to have proprietary trading. Um, They're not, uh, you know, the fees are much higher. So you're seeing actual structural change. You know, when I started in the business, there were five investment banks. Today there are none. Goldman Sachs is, is, is no longer an investment bank. It's a bank holding company. So you've seen so much change. You've seen a change in perception. You know, when I first started, Wall Street was the place to be. People wanted to get Wall Street jobs. They wanted to work in Wall Street. They, they were coming from their MBA degrees. And instead of going to places like McKinsey and, and, and Procter & Gamble, they were going to Goldman Sachs and the Blackstone Group. Um, you know, people want today, it, it, people are looking down on high compensation. Today, they are questioning whether or not the compensation is appropriate. So there's a new perception. So there was so much change that has occurred as a result of that weekend and, and more broadly as a result of the financial crisis. You're listening to the Penguin Business Beat. For more information about our show and our guests, visit www.portfolioimprint.com. How do you see the new regulations playing out? It really depends on who's in the White House. But, you know, I think that the, the financial reg reform, as it is right now, is wide open to interpretation. So we really don't know. And that, unfortunately, is a real negative because there's so much uncertainty surrounding what will happen and how these banks will change because it's totally open to interpretation. We don't know. Um, There are some things that this bill addresses that have nothing to do with with how we got here. For example, proprietary trading. You know, the so-called Volcker rule that wants to separate pure vanilla lending from so-called proprietary trading. That had nothing to do with the financial crisis. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were the major culprits. They were the too big to fail institutions, they along with AIG. And they are not included in financial reg reform. So that's a huge nut to crack at some point. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have to be restructured. They cannot be quasi public companies but owned by you know by supported by the government. Now they're in conservatorship and the government owns them. But you know, so I think the, the short answer is we don't know. And unfortunately, that is going to keep the CEOs of the financial firms, their hands tied. They're not going to be making, you know, big moves. They're not going to be taking risks. They're not going to be adding heads to the payroll until they really understand what their business looks like in the coming years. And so that's why we're probably going to face unemployment for some time to come. And, and a tough economy, which, by the way, is worsening right now. Um, and unfortunately, this is not going to change until we see a change in confidence on the part of business. And we need policies that support business hiring people. And right now, they're talking about higher expenses, higher taxes. They're not going to sit their next out and put more people on the payroll if they have to pay for health care, higher expenses there, and, and, and pay higher taxes. So that's why we're in a bit of a catch-22 right now. So what do you think readers of your book need to be looking out for now? I think right now, you know, the most important event for the markets is the November midterm elections. People would like to feel like we have a divided government, whereas it's not one-sided and, um, you know, the administration could get through any new policy that it, that it wants, because I think that has really impacted the markets. And I think that's part of the reason that investors are keeping to the sidelines. So I think if we were to see a change in the House, 
and a bit of a more balance in governments, I think people would, would celebrate that. I think the markets would rally. People would feel richer, and they would spend money, and that would help the economy, frankly. People are, 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 are watching unemployment, you know, and they want, it, they want to feel like they're not nervous about their jobs, their neighbors aren't nervous about their jobs. So I think that's another thing that people need to keep a watch on, because as soon as employment, the employment picture starts improving, that will, that will lift many boats. Well, it looks like that's all we have time for. Thank you so much, Maria. Okay, thank you so much.